once again, audience, and welcome back to Dominations with Christopher. The kids are sleeping, so I thought I would throw this out there. And it has been asked, both on last night's stream and today, I was asked, what's a good base configuration? Um, now, there are some things that are available on the internet uh, as far as bases for all ages. However, uh, I haven't found any resources that actually explain to you how or what makes a decent base. Um, I think it's really about trial and error, but here's some generic stuff that you can go ahead and keep in mind. Um, now, I am in the industrial age on this account, so obviously I am going to have to... I think cover this for probably enlightened and forward. Well, no, not even. This so I guess we'll just cover the the different defensive buildings, and you can work it based on the age that you're in. Uh, enlightened, I believe you have three mortars, uh, and what I usually say regarding mortars is to try and keep them in a square format uh, if you are in the industrial age, and a triangular format if you're below that. Uh, and if you're below that, then you really just want to work on the coverage. The, the basic concept with your mortars is that they cover one another plus whatever you're defending. Uh, if you can't tell, I am trying to defend my oil. <laughs> so the majority of this is geared in order to actually fire upon people that are going for my oil, but as well hit outside of my base. Um, I like to keep my mortars... A little bit back away from the walls. The reason for that is if you place your mortars or your catapults right on the wall, any troops that are attacking said wall will not be hit by that mortar. They might catch a little bit of the splash damage, um, but it will stop firing if there's a guy standing right in front of it, as you can see by the little red circle. So again, if you've got two mortars, you want them to be covering effectively whatever you want to protect, and a little bit of one another. Uh, if you have three, keep them in a triangle. Uh, so the reason that you keep them in a triangle is obviously because you'd have two on the top and then one on the bottom in order to cover whatever was in the center plus each other. Uh, the next step from there, or I guess point to keep in mind, is that you do have to defend said mortars. Uh, the best way to defend said mortars is obviously your towers. Towers, readout towers, cannon towers, uh, ballista towers. It is important to place those in and around in order to actually defend anything that gets close to it. Now, obviously, I mean, I get run over all the time. Uh, so it is trial and error, and definitely do it doesn't work all the time. So, your towers are an actual defense. Your readout towers are wonderful as far as dealing with ranged troops, uh, spitting those out. And then, and really, I think, for myself anyways, a lot of my defensive structures are based around my mortars. Your mortars are, are kind of your primary defense against ground troops. Um, so, that's what my defense is kind of geared around. The next thing that I keep in mind is what's actually spitting out troops. This is a good example right here. Um, and the idea of having things that spit out troops isn't because they're necessarily going to go and kill all of the guys and, and do that. What they are there to do is to slow people down and distract the heavier troops. And it's important to keep those within the range of the mortars, the actual firing range of the mortars. You'll note that a lot of my garrisons are outside of the walls. My heavier producing troop units, uh, stables, are behind the walls because I do want those to last a little bit longer than, say, the garrisons. Um, however, it's still producing those troops right within the range that I would like them to of this mortar. Um, and again, you want those mortars covering the primary resource that you're trying to protect. So my garrisons are going to be producing units my stable is going to be producing units, and hopefully if they're coming in from here, that mortar is going to be firing on them. They're going to have three unit producing, four unit producing buildings uh, all coming toward there in order to actually slow them up. 
that's the goal. Um, what else should we cover? Roads. Um, all too often I see people that don't utilize their roads appropriately. Roads are extremely important, whether it's your regular base or your war base. Uh, it helps to increase the actual, well, especially in a war base, uh, it helps to increase the actual hit point value of your city center um, or your town center. Uh, a few notes to make in regard to roads. Uh, keep them away from your walls where possible. Uh, obviously, a, a bad example of that is here. I've got my road right next to my wall. Theoretically, I would like to be able to extend this wall out to here in order to connect all of these buildings to it. Um, however, that is not possible. A better example of that is on this side here, where you'll note that I've got a little bit of a jog there. However, my road comes from my, my city center out away from my walls, allowing me to actually connect buildings on both sides all the way along. And you can play around with the ends of roads uh, in order to actually best utilize your road network, trying to increase that as much as possible. Uh, and the concept of increasing the hit points of your city center or your town center is such that it allows the town center to spit out those supporting troops. Uh, if it falls too quickly, those troops don't have a chance to get out. Uh, and obviously, if somebody uses a targeted rally or a building rally, uh, then the higher the hit point of whatever they've targeted, the longer they're going to be focused on there. Uh, and hopefully, the longer your defensive buildings have a chance to attack said units. So, that is that. Uh, walls. Do not neglect your walls. Um, I have seen excellent utilization of double walls in certain bases that I've been caught by. Um, the one that always gets me, though, is people that actually upgrade their walls appropriately. My walls are not even max. They're, you know, level 9, and they were level 9 when I upgraded to the industrial age. I'm now working on getting level 10 walls. Uh, don't neglect them. Obviously, you want to keep the game fun, and you want to keep moving forward. Uh, so don't make it such a high priority that you stop playing. Um, but don't negate the importance of having proper walls. Um, gate placement. You need to place your gates such that your troops can actually all get in and out on all sides of your base. I've seen gate, gate placement that has been very well done in order to actually split troops up so that your ranged units go one direction, your heavies and all the rest go in a different direction. Um, but don't forget your gate placement. You need to allow um, for everybody to get in and out. The other thing to note is that you have to have a gate around all of these buildings, including your fort. I've come across three war, war bases now where people actually just walled all the way around their fort. Uh, and as a result, the general popped out and just stood there. No good. Uh, a note on the fort. Keep it in. Uh, if people are like me, the first thing that they're going to do is drop some cannons or artillery, take out that fort, not even have to waste a tactic, um, and they're going to kill it. You want your fort to be inside in order for uh, troops to actually have to get inside before it pops out that general. You want to allow it the time to actually produce those generals to help defend. So keep your fort in where possible. Um, what else is there? What else is there to note? Your wonders. Uh, you do want to use your wonders appropriately within your war base. Let's go and check out my war base and within your base in general. We're gonna scout Joey and then we'll move down. That way it doesn't actually display all my traps and such. So if we go one down. So here is my war base. You can see that I've got coverage from all sides of my town center. I've got good protection of said mortars uh, using readouts or archer towers. I've got unit producing buildings on the outside um, of my war base, and I haven't protected my resources. Your resources are not important. 
Uh, the only buildings that are important are the ones that you want to utilize because of hit points. So, for instance, I should probably be putting this, I would think, should be right here. I'll flip that afterwards, I think. Um, what else was I going to show you guys? The wonders. I have my wonder right here, which is Versailles, which is slows down all the troops. The reason I put it here is because I want to allow my generals the ability to pop out. Being a, one of the primary defensive buildings, I do want my fort to produce those generals to pop out. So I've utilized Versailles in order to slow all the troops up that get in the circumference of this fort. Now, actually I am going to show you my traps. I think I'll show you my traps on my regular base because you you saw them anyways. So, who's to say I'm not getting attacked and people are actually watching the video and going, it's got a trap here and here and here and here. It is what it is. Um, a note that I've slowly learned is that cow traps belong with ambush traps. That's a pair. you got to go with both of them. Uh, you can see that I'm utilizing Versailles in regard to actually sticking my cow traps and ambush traps all the way around, complemented with some of my uh, unit producing buildings all the way around. We have 47 minutes until, well actually I've only got two minutes, two and a half minutes until I spit out tanks on defense. That makes me happy. Uh, where is my... Another thing that I have seen done is in regard to the fort, uh, an excellent place for caltrops and your little ambush traps is in the circumference of the thing that you want to spit out the best troops. So either that's going to be your city center or it's going to be your fort. Uh, but you want to stick those, I think in a war base, you would stick those around the circumference of the thing that's going to be under attack. So uh, it's important to note your who can attack what. So you know that a, a British ranged troop uh, and artillery both shoot five spaces. How long is five spaces? Well, five spaces would be, you know, two buildings and a wall, right? You can count them. One, two, three, four, five. So you know that that's how far any sort of a ranged troop, a, a British ranged troop, or artillery, cannon, howitzer, all shoot five. Uh, so traps are important because you want to slow them down. If you've got a howitzer that was, you know, coming in right here, let's say, if you had a little ambush trap uh, along with the spike trap. Yes. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. So your traps, whether it be spike traps or your cow traps and your ambush traps, belong in and around the circumference of the thing that you want to spit out troops. Uh, I hope this is of some help. If you guys have more specific questions or need a base review, uh, Marla does an excellent base review on Tuesday nights. That's a live stream. Uh, that she's been doing for a few weeks now. Uh, it's been very successful. So drop us a note and she will gladly include you in next week's. Uh, don't forget to keep your sticks on the ice and have a good time.